Hello everybody and welcome back to the Brick Ninja. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Lego Ideas set, Magic of Disney. This set retails for $100 in the United States. It is recommended for ages 18 plus. It has 1,103 pieces. It is set number 21352 and it comes with 7 characters. So now that we've got all of the introductions out of the way, let's get to the review of the set. So here is everything from this set. It can be broken up into three different sections, which is what I've already done. So I'm going to start with the smallest part over here. This area, which represents three movies, The Lion King, Beauty and the Beast, and Encanto. And I think that this is a really fun way to have scenes representing these three movies put together. You have from Encanto a small brick built casita with a rat because Bruno is the minifigure you get in this set representing Encanto. And you get a whole bunch of flowers and these right here are Wolverine claw pieces in green, so that's really cool to get. And you do have a few small tree builds, and this one right here can actually be moved, so that's cool. If you want to have that posed in a different way, you can do that. And now moving to Beauty and the Beast, what you see right there in the middle with the rows... That, I believe, is a print and not a sticker. I'm 99% sure that that's a print and not a sticker. And it's a very good print. And you also have a brick-built rose for, of course, the magic rose from the movie. And you have some flames in the back. And it's just a nice uh, circular area. And I really like how you get these parts right here these translucent orange flat tiles, which are commonly used for Doctor Strange portals in the Lego Marvel sets. So it's cool to see those used in a different uh, way. And now moving on to Pride Rock from The Lion King. This is very cool. The way that Pride Rock is designed here with different slopes and tiles and some curved pieces and also a few, a few large bricks is very good. And there is this little piece right here where you can set Simba and have him standing on Pride Rock. And you do also have this piece right here for like a large tree. And I will say there is one thing with the Pride Rock build. It is a little loose, like just a tiny bit right here. This can move up and down, but this part right here underneath this part can come off from time to time if it's not really pushed good into place. So um, I'm not really sure why it doesn't just stay in there all the time, but that is something that I have noticed. Um, but nonetheless, these are three great small builds representing three great Disney movies. And turning this around to the back, there's not really anything on the back of these. There are these three uh, technic holes right here, which can, allows this to connect to the larger part of the set over here with the big waves. And now, speaking of the big waves, that's the next part of the set that we're going to look at. And this is great. There is so much good parts usage here, even though it's mostly all repetitive, it is still very good. I had a lot of fun building these big waves. Building upwards with Lego is my favorite type of, uh, is my favorite way to build with Lego. And so building these big waves was very fun. And it's also just makes this entire display great because you have four uh, movies here represented by water. Of course, you have 
Flounder and Sebastian here representing the Little Mermaid. You have the brooms up here representing Fantasia. You have a surfboard with Lilo on it representing Lilo and Stitch. And then you have Geppetto's little raft from Pinocchio. And I'm going to start by taking a look at this. And I will say first off, if you can see that right there, this is actually on a Technic ball joint. So it can be moved and posed in different ways if you wanted it to. And that is the same with Lilo's surfboard right there. It is also posed with a Technic pen. So you could have that posed in different ways. And now removing... Whoops, that just came off. Okay, that's coming apart. <laughs> Here is Geppetto's raft. And this is a really nice small build for his raft. All of these uh, 1x4 tile pieces right here, these are prints, not stickers. And you have some nice 1x1 one one circular tiles on the end. And this, these uh, parts underneath to help connect to the larger piece and represent some of the water and the waves. And the sail, or I guess sails, because there's two of them, look like this. And you can move them up and down if you want to have the sails of the raft posed in different ways. So that is Geppetto's raft. And this is a really great inclusion. I really like it. Here is the big brick-built Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey Mouse, and this is just awesome. I absolutely love this. It is such a fun and cool part of this set, and it is my favorite part of this set. And I will say right off the bat that the eyes and the hat, these are all printed. These are not stickers. And so that is a great part. And his nose right here is a Technic ball, which just connects right there. And his ears, his ears can actually detach. And they're made up with these two dish pieces and these two parts right here. And they just connect onto the end. And then they just clip right back into place right inside here. It's very easy to clip them back in. And Mickey Mouse also has a bit of a hidden reference inside of him. If you remove his arm right here, you can see some blue, red, white, and, and a little bit of black and some brown because that is a reference to Woody from Toy Story. So that's really nice that they included a uh, Toy Story reference inside of this set. So there is some right there. Yeah, the, yeah. so there is some Pixar representation in this set, since there's no Pixar characters. And the other side also has the same. And the arms just uh, detach and retach very easily. And the hands are very well made with lots of tile pieces. And these two large uh, Technic pieces right here. And the hands can move 360 if you want to have him posed in different ways. The fingers are all posable. So that is Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey. And this is just a nice topping on top of an already perfect set. Because put this entire thing together and it just makes for the in my opinion, the ultimate Disney display. And that is honestly the best part about what this set is. Here is Flounder and Sebastian. And these are two really great molds. These, these characters are not exclusive to this set. They have come in other Little Mermaid Disney sets before. But these are still two great characters to have here. Here is Lilo. 
and she is currently exclusive to this set. And the reason why I'm saying currently exclusive to this set is just because there is a rumor going around right now in the LEGO community that there is a, a LEGO Lilo and Stitch set coming next year in 2025. A uh, brick, a house that is uh, Nani, is that her sister's name? Um, the house. So um, that's why I'm saying currently for right now, but uh, we'll have to wait and see because that is just a rumor right now. But this is still a great minifigure. She, she is using uh, Pocahontas' hair from the Lego Disney minifigure series number three. And she does have a flower in it. And she has two facial expressions. Whoops, that, that's blurry. There we go. And this one is just really cute and funny. And she is using... If you, were, if you got the Lego Harry Potter advent calendar from, I think... I don't remember, either 2021 or 2022. Um, they did a similar thing there with some of the minifigures in there. This is just a regular one by two red Lego brick. It's just that it's had this printing put on it to match Lilo's torso for her dress. And, and so this is what she has instead of giving her like regular legs or like mid legs or something like that. But, uh, that is the Lilo minifigure, and I really like this minifigure. Here's Simba, and this is a absolutely fantastic inclusion in this set. The printing on this mold is fantastic and pretty insane. He's got his tail back here and some markings on his paws and on his chest. And, of course, his, his ears. And it's just an all-around great, great way to give us our first, quote-unquote, minifigure of Simba. And I, I think that LEGO should use this again. Because a LEGO Disney set that I have always hoped that they would make one day is a giant pride rock. So I hope that one day Lego can make a Pride Rock minifigure and bring this back and do the same thing with this same type of mold for Mufasa, Scar, Nala, um, you know, just all of them, Timon and Pumbaa. So I hope that we get that one day and that this is not the last time that we will see this particular type of Lion King character in Lego. Here's Geppetto. And Geppetto has an accessory of a paintbrush. And this is a very cool uh, minifigure. He is using Shaggy's hairpiece from the Lego Scooby-Doo line but in white. So this is a great way to bring this hairpiece back in a recolor. And he just has plain black legs, um, but his face print is great with his glasses and his little white mustache. And turning him around, he does have an alternate facial expression and just a tiny bit of back detailing on his shirt. So that is Geppetto. Here is Belle, and I am so happy that we finally have Belle in minifigure form for the very first time. She is absolutely phenomenal. I love this minifigure. I do wish that instead of giving her the normal type of dress piece, that Lego would have gone the extra step and given her the larger Lego dress piece. That was used for the Queen of Hearts in the Lego Disney Minifigure Series 3, that type of dress piece. But this is still a phenomenal minifigure. She has dual molded arm printing for her gloves that she's wearing. And her dress. And her hair is a hard plastic, not a rubber piece. And you can see that it's got all these curls. 
and there is a little hole up here like if you wanted to put like a like a flower or something so um there's that option and now removing her hair she does have an alternate facial expression and back printing and i love that the back printing goes all the way down to the bottom of the dress piece i do really love that so that is bell and last but certainly not least, we have our very first Lego Encanto minifigure, Bruno. And this is a great minifigure. I am so happy that we have Bruno here, even though it is very weird because Bruno is the only uh, character from Encanto that is currently missing in the mini doll form. Uh, well, as far as the main characters, like it, the ones with, uh, with gifts along with Mirabelle, he has not received a mini doll of himself, just like none of the other characters from Encanto have received mini figures of themselves. Um, his accessory is a one by two printed tile of the prophecy from the film. You can see that it's cracked with Casita. And here he is. And I will say my one and only thing that I wish was different about this minifigure, it's really not a big deal for me personally. I do just wish that he would have had dual molded leg printing, but it's not that big of a deal. And so removing his hair piece, you can see that he has some great detail going down his shirt all the way down his legs with some hourglasses representing of course his gift of being able to see the future and turning him around you can see his eyes are glowing green which is what happens when he is using his gift so that is bruno so that is my review of the lego ideas set Magic of Disney, and I think that this is an absolutely incredible set. It is very compact, but it it packs quite a big punch, and I will also say that this is the 60th Lego Ideas set, so that's crazy that we've had 60 Lego Ideas sets, and I think that you get so many great characters in this set that we've never gotten before, I mean, I honestly, I always hoped that one day we would get some sort of Lion King minifigure in some form, but I honestly never thought that we would get one. And Belle is another uh, Disney princess that finally has a minifigure that we can check off the list. And I'm not 100% sure about this. I think she might be the final one because I know that you get... Rapunzel, Tiana, Cinderella in the in the large Disney castle and I know there's one other uh prince Snow Snow White I think. Yeah, Snow White and I'm pretty sure we also have Snow White in the Seven Dwarfs cottage set so um but regardless it's great to get another Disney princess and we also have our first Encanto minifigure. We have Geppetto, which will go great alongside the Pinocchio minifigure from the CMF series. Now we just need Jiminy Cricket in some way. And Lilo will go great with both of the Stitch minifigures from previous CMF series. So this is all around just a great set and a must-have for any uh, LEGO fan and specifically LEGO Disney fan. I f that if you are a massive Disney fan like I am, I would honestly, like, even if you're, like, a casual Lego fan and, you, and you're not crazy into Lego, I would honestly still highly recommend this set just because this is a great Disney display. Lego aside, this is just a great Disney display. And that is what I love most about this set. Yes, the brick-built Sorcerer Mickey on his own is amazing. I love all the characters in here. But this set on its own is just a love letter to Disney and Disney fans. And that is the best part about this set. So those are my thoughts and opinions on this set. 
And also, I will say for $100, I do think that this set is worth it. It's 1,100 pieces for $100, so that's a really good uh, part to price to piece ratio. So those are all of my thoughts and opinions on this set. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this set down below in the comments section. And if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I've got lots of awesome LEGO content coming very soon. And as always, Ninja Go!